welcome back everybody uh today we're gonna take a look at a uh, few clips of some ridiculous people just generally speaking we're becoming an odder weirder softer nation our first clip is going to be about a young lady who thinks she's a bird or a Syrian bird or something i it is the the oddest thing i, I don't understand these people they are their whole ideology is confusing not just to me, uh, to everybody, probably to themselves. Because you could ask them a few questions, and, and I bet you they, they would crumble under the weight of logic. And they would just just fall apart, and they would get angry, yell, and scream. Um, so we're going to check out that clip, and we're going to see the ridiculousness of the new America. Before we get into the video, I need to tell you a secret. I need you to hit the like and the subscribe button. I need to fight against the YouTube algorithm. Because I'm on the road to 1,000. I'm going to need all the help I can get. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Asa. I am a member of a DID system, and I'm also a bearded vulture Therian. I have two questions. One is for other Therians, uh, specifically bird Therians. Um, and the other question is for other systems who have Therian system members. So first question for other bird Therians, what are some things you do that help you feel more connected to your stereotype? Like, I know that for people whose stereotypes are four-legged, they can do quadrobics, and that helps them a lot. Um, but obviously that's not applicable to bird Therians. I also want to clarify for anyone who doesn't know, um, quadrobics does not automatically equal Therians. People can do quadrobics and not be a Therian. So that's my first question, how to feel more connected to bird stereotypes. Um, and second question is for systems with Therian alters. Do these alters appear human in a world, or do they appear as their stereotype in our world? Or is it kind of a combo situation? Like we have someone in our system who is both a guy and a vulture at the same time. We don't consider him a Therian because he doesn't consider himself a Therian. Um, he just kind of exists as both of those things at once. Is that how Therian alters work in you guys' systems? Just very curious about how other people experience this kind of thing. But as you could tell, a moron, right? It's hard to even follow what she's talking about. There's a lot of words you gotta Google. It, it really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Um, this is why you know, smaller, weaker nations think they can overrun us because of this type of nonsense right here. Um, there's probably about four or five pigeons behind her saying, uh, we don't claim her. This is why we will probably lose the next, you know, outer war that we get into. And it's not even just, you know, the citizens. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, um, has issued a memo to everybody in the office um, about the terms you should and shouldn't use in your daily conversation with your co-workers or even the outside public. It is absolutely stupid. In a memo to staff, he cautioned against using gendered language. The list of do not use phrases include manpower. You guys, ladies and gentlemen, mother, father, son, stepdaughter, and husband, wife. He also warned staff against pressuring coworkers to share their pronouns, which can include Z and Zer. As you can see, that short clip from Fox News, um, e even inside our own government, this is what they're wasting their time about. Uh, this guy leads the, the foreign policy argument worldwide for the United States of America. This guy, do you think anybody in their right mind in, say, China, because he has to deal with people in China, he has to deal with people in Asia, all of Asia, all of Europe, all of Africa, does that seem like the thing that you should be wasting your time about? Is that the issue, the biggest issue of the day? You had to take your time out and have somebody draft up this memo about so-called pronouns, or not to use mother and father, or son or daughter, or any language that is is a factual descriptor of human beings. As much as people try to say that there's more than just two, there's male and female, that's it. And I understand people are going to get mad at that, but it's dumb. I, I don't want to hear about, you know, XXY and YYXXYYXX. Literally, there's a point that's in the middle that makes us binary. You either fit in one or you fit in the other. You can have feminine men. You can have masculine women. It's all the same. You're still a woman at the end of the day. You're still female at the end of the day. 
regardless how masculine you are or how feminine you are as a male, you're still male. It's never, it, it doesn't change. It never will change. As much as you want it to change, it will never change. And these people are, have just not gotten it through their heads that there are bigger problems in the world for us to have to worry about than what we call each other. And you know what the sad part is? Um, the president of El Salvador did a speech at CPAC uh, over the weekend, over this past couple of days. Um, he seems to have more sense than our own elected officials. He gets it. He understands it more than any of us. Because his country was basically taken over by criminals. Kind of what we're allowing our country to become. Um, so we're going to take a look at a clip of uh, him at CPAC. Let's enjoy. The disease that had begun with mild symptoms got worse and worse. It became a cancer that seemed incurable. We are already seeing these symptoms in the United States. Big cities in decline like Baltimore, Portland, New York, just to name a few. Places where crime and drugs have become, have become the daily norm and even accepted and promoted by the government. How many young people have you lost to the streets of Philadelphia or San Francisco to fentanyl? Did we see these apocalyptic sites 15, 10, five years ago? Can you imagine how it will be in the next five, 10, or 15 years? The same thing was happening in El Salvador. In the span of less than a decade, gangs took control of all the country and our society. They evolved into a parallel government, controlling elections and even political parties. Every aspect of the daily life of most people was controlled by the gangs. Murder capital of the world is a tragic title to hold. Getting rid of, what, of that was the bare minimum we had to achieve in order to even start thinking about rebuilding our country. And see, President Bukele from El Salvador um, understands it more than anybody. Um, again, his country was filled with gangs. I, I, th I think the last thing I seen, I, I heard about it, it was he cut the murder rate in by 55%. Now, the one guy who deals with our foreign adversaries and allies alike is more worried about the woke ideology of a bunch of college students and mentally ill individuals who belong in a psychiatric ward than the actual... You know, the mass migration and invasion of gangs and criminals and terrorists into our own nation. Inflation and market prices. The struggling of American citizens. You know, thank God uh, Joe Biden, uh, you know, he forgave $1.2 billion in in school debt. Which was great. He sh you know, I'm, I'm cool with that. But the problem is, you gave, you gave more than 100 times that amount to a foreign country to protect their borders, so we can't. When are we going to protect our borders? You gave how much to Ukraine to protect their borders from Russia? When we're, we're supposed to smile while we're getting invaded by our back door? By our southern entrance? Our port of entrance are, are just overran. We're not even supposed to put razor wire up to stop? You understand that there's adversaries and enemies that can cross your border and take what you got. You understand that when it comes to Ukraine, but you don't understand that when it comes to American soil? How dumb is you? You're dumb. If You're dumb to think that this isn't going to happen. It happens all over the world. It's happening right now. There's a reason why you gave other countries $150 billion to protect their borders for what? For what? What about our borders? What about our people? I mean, you couldn't even pay people in Hawaii more than $700 a household uh, when they lost everything. But criminals come here. Literal criminals come here. And you give them $10,000 in a debit card of our money? Our people are starving and struggling. But you give everybody else? What is, what is, what is the underlying motivator? What is, what is the, what is the plan 
Stan? What is going on here? Why? I, 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 I'm so confused on why American citizens haven't stood up and revolted yet. Again, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's disgusting. It, really. We're going to turn into El Salvador because guess what? A lot of those people left his country to come here because they got scared because they were bad guys and they had nowhere to go. He wasn't having it. They ran, he ran them out of their country and they came here. And just as a point of interest, the first city that he brought up is the city that I reside in. It's crazy that Baltimore is on the first, on the tips of his lips, what he can perceives as one of the most dangerous cities is the one I live in. I see it firsthand every day, all day long. It happens. That's what it is. That's what we're facing times a thousand. So if you agree with me, leave a comment down the bottom. If you enjoy the con if you join the content, give me a like, subscribe. I'm sending this to a friend. I thank you guys for watching. God bless you and your family. God bless America. I hope I see you in the next one. Peace.